It's hard to believe that the Porsche Macan has been in America since 2015, and back then, when Porsche was developing this car, it was known internally as the Cajun, which literally meant it was the Cayenne's baby brother. Now, of course, Porsche, little did they know, this car would quickly become their best-selling model here in America, with them moving around 23,500 units in all of 2018. So to keep the Macan from getting too stale in this ever-changing segment, Porsche is introducing a refreshed Macan for 2019, with new styling, front and rear, it's got a new powertrain for the Macan S, and it's got an interior that takes the new 11-inch display from the Porsche 911. So the big question I want answered in this always changing and very competitive compact luxury segment, how does the new 2019 Macan stack up? That's what we're here to find out. So typically I don't start with underneath the hood when it comes to a crossover, but this is a Porsche, so I wanna first talk about what's going on underneath the hood. Now this particular one that I'm showing you is actually the base Macan, which means it's got a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, basically from the Audi A4 and the Audi Q5. In the Macan, it makes 248 horsepower and 273 foot pounds of torque. Those numbers are very competitive with all the other four cylinder competition. You can see the engine is mounted longitudinally because this rides on a modified platform uh, that's shared with the Audi Q5. So it's the MLB platform. Now, uh, all-wheel drive is going to be standard equipment. There's no rear drive Macan. It's also a rear biased all-wheel drive and Porsche's signature seven-speed PDK. Their dual clutch transmission is also going to be standard. It's basically essentially the same as what you're going to get in Audi, in Audi Q5, but a little bit beefed up for the Porsche. Now, thankfully, this is an SUV that'll still do SUV things. It'll tow a maximum of 4,500 or 4,409 pounds. And Porsche says you should get to 60 in around 6.3 seconds. Now, if you guys want more power, there is a Macan S that's also available that'll have a three liter single turbo V6 with around 348 horsepower. So about hundred more than this and 352 pound feet of torque, which again, almost hundred more. So the S is available if you guys want more performance. As this one sits, it weighs around 4,300 pounds in fuel economy. Surprisingly, it's not really all that great. It's rated at 19 in the city, 23 on the highway, please be sure to put premium. You may as well step up to the six cylinder because that one will get 18 in the city, 23 on the highway. Now, I like the way the hood looks when you open it because it's kind of got like a clamshell style and the uh, actual headlights stay placed while there's a cutout for it. Shutting the hood, you can see if you squint at this car, you're gonna notice some slight changes that Porsche has made for 2019. The most notice noticeable one is the new front fascia with this new uh, black portion here with the new mounts for the LED uh, turn signals and LED running lights. Uh, the full LED headlights are actually standard equipment, which is great because Porsche typically makes you pay extra for that. If you guys want swiveling adaptive headlights with a black finish, that is what's extra. You have an LED turn signal here. No fog lights in general, but the car does look a little bit wider this year. It looks great with this white exterior color. I think Porsche did a really good job with the design of this car. It looks very Porsche. It looks like a lot of their other models. Now, in terms of the size, this is the smallest SUV that Porsche makes, but it's still relatively large uh, by you know small car standards. It's wheelbase at 110. 10.5 inches long is about the same length as something like the BMW X3 or an Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Or Stelvio. The wheels on my particular one here are 19 inch wheels. These are optional. They're part of the designer uh, Macan wheels. They're wrapped in 235 tires in the front, 255s in the back. If you guys want bigger wheels and tires, you can go all the way up to a 20 inch wheel. Uh, 18 inch wheels are going to be the standard option if you guys want a bit more base Macan. Now, my tester in general has the standard um, steel suspension, so it gives you about eight inches of ground clearance. This roof rail that you see here is black painted. It's optional, like $500 extra. It makes the, the car look a little bit more like an SUV because there are certain angles of this car where I think it looks more like a hot hatch versus an SUV. And at the back of this vehicle, you can see the most changes are going to be found here at the rear. Porsche has given this car updated taillights. They're full LED taillights with their signature four-point LED, just like the front. And then you have this new area over here that connects the two um, modules together, very similar to what you get in the Panamera and in the Cayenne, so it's kind of going with the rest of the Porsche family. My tester here has the standard exhaust tips. If you guys go for the sport exhaust, you'll get a quad outlet along with the S model. I'll let you guys hear what that engine sounds like real quick.
course, this is the base engine. The engine itself sounds good for a four cylinder, but if you guys want more noise, make sure you guys tick the option box for the S. Now, obviously there's a sticker on the back here because this car is mine for a day while my Cayman is in the shop. But let's look at the cargo capacity over here. When you open up the trunk, that power lift gate is included on this model and you get around 17.6 cubic feet of space with the seats up. This is one of the smallest in the segment. Uh, a lot of the competitors offer a lot more. If you fold down those seats, you get around 52 cubic feet of space. So keep in mind, that's about 10 cubic, cubic feet less than what you get in something like the X3. Underneath here, there's actually a temporary spare tire with a jack, so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. All right, so some of you may have trouble spotting the 2019 Macan on the outside, but let's move on to the interior because Porsche has made way more substantial changes and you should be able to tell the differences right off the bat. The first thing I wanna show you guys, the key fob. This particular one here has the optional exterior color match painted key along with a leather pouch. This is $540 extra to just have the key painted. It's got the Porsche entry and drive, so the car looks like a key. It looks really nice as well. I kind of wish my Cayman had this painted key even though it's kind of a ripoff for $540. But because it has the Porsche entry and drive, there's a little area here on the door handle if you touch that that will lock the door for you whenever you touch that. And then once it locks the doors, the mirrors will electrically fold, which is nice. You can turn that setting on and off. When you wanna unlock it, just touch the back of the door handle and that will uh, unlock the door for you. Now looking at the interior, my particular tester has uh, the premium plus package with the 14 way power seats with this beige two-tone interior. Um, it also has the optional uh, Porsche uh, emblem on the actual headrest, that's like another 380 bucks just to have that embroidered into the headrest. Overall, the interior really makes a nice first impression. I really like it with this two-tone beige interior. This is just the standard interior. It doesn't actually have the upgraded leather on the dashboard or the extra leather on the door panels. The seats themselves, they are heated and cooled. And you also get a three-person memory on the driver's side and on the passenger side. So that's a really nice feature. You don't typically find that in this segment of vehicle. Now the Macan uh, has eight inches of ground clearance. So when you get in, it has that typical easy SUV step in height, uh, which is nice. And then when you shut the door, it sounds, it sounds nice and solid. Typical of a German car has that bank fold like solidity when the door shuts. Now, because I have the Porsche entry and drive, you turn this little thing over here to start the vehicle up once the key fob is in there and put your foot on the brake. And you can see the gauges haven't really changed. This is this, kind of the same gauges that I find in my Cayman. Um, it doesn't have the Sport Chrono package, which would include a little Sport package or a little rotator dial here on the wheel. Instead, you just kind of push this button over here, which goes into the Sport mode. Remember, this is just a two liter turbocharged four cylinder kind of similar to the engine that's in the uh, Audi Q5. Now looking at this interior, uh, just looking at it, you can really see, wow, this 11 inch display here that's part of the Porsche Connect head unit is just a huge improvement over the pre-refreshed Macan that I showed you guys earlier this year. I'm also noticing the vents, they've been repositioned from over here on the dash to this lower area over here. You have some repositioning of the buttons as well. Wireless Apple CarPlay is included with this particular Premium Plus package. Uh, which is very nice. Porsche doesn't do Android Auto still, um, so that's something to keep in mind if you guys are an Android user. I love the graphics of the screen. Really snappy, uh, very quick response. Um, the clarity and the crystal clear nature of the screen is also great. Pulling up something like Waze, that's Apple CarPlay taking a little bit of time for you, but you can see there, it doesn't actually take up the entire screen here when you're using the Waze integration. It, that would be nice if it did. But I have to say, loving the wireless CarPlay, this head unit here is a step in the right direction for Porsche. Now going to the actual regular head unit, you can see this over here is basically the home screen. Uh, I'm not entirely sure you can customize this. I need to spend a little bit more time playing with it. I think it looks a little busy. I'm not sure I genuinely like this. I mean, you can tap something like this. This will take you to your actual radio. You can go through your, fav your favorites over here. The interesting part about this is it shows you two lists here recently played, and then your favorites down here, which is really interesting. Uh, if you wanna throw away favorites, you can kinda just do that and then just drag it all up to the top. That'll throw away the favorites if you guys wanna get rid of your favorites, or you can go back to tune. Uh, this actually isn't a tuning knob, which surprised me. I kinda wish it was. This is a touchscreen, as you can see, but you can also use this wheel to kind of go through there if you don't wanna touch the touchscreen. This is your volume knob over here. If you wanna tune, instead you have to 
push the actual button on the screen, which I'm not sure I generally like that. I would prefer that this just be the actual tuning knob. Going, going to the nav display here, you can see when you use the Porsche nav, it does take up the entire screen, which is nice. Um, you can actually make this go away. I wonder if you can make this little compass over here go away on the side. This, to me, does look really good. For some reason, though, I wanted this to look a little bit nicer than what I find in Audi with their Google Earth display. I'm a little surprised that Porsche isn't using that uh, actual map display, but this is looking a lot better than what I find in my Cayman, for sure. So this, remember, is the same head unit you're gonna get in a 911. Now, going over here to your media sources, it'll basically go back to the stuff that's in the car. Phone, again, I've got Apple CarPlay, the wireless CarPlay that's activated, uh, which is good. Uh, going over here to the car, uh, basically allows you to change a lot of the settings. Now, obviously, um, go to vehicle settings here, you can see it shows a really cool graphic of the car. You can change the lock and unlock function, the fold in mirrors, that's where you can turn that off. You can adjust the exterior lighting, whether you want it to fade in and out. You can turn off on and off the high beam assist. Love the graphics. Um, this is definitely very Porsche. It's basically the same thing that you find in my Cayman. It's just been beefed up significantly. You can see it shows you all your different uh, trip computer sources. Um, your controls and whatnot, going back over there. This is really cool, like this, going to the app. The app is kind of useless. I mean, you've got weather and news and that's pretty much it. And then scroll down here, you can go adjust the sound settings, which is nice. This one here has the, po the Bose premium audio system. And then you can also adjust the settings even more going over here. So, and then clicking back over there takes you back to the Apple CarPlay. I just, I don't particularly love the home screen. It just looks a little bit busy. I would have preferred like the nav be over here. I'm not entirely sure you can adjust this. Uh, actually, yeah, you can configure home or configure widgets. So there you go. You can actually adjust all the categories there. So if you want, I can move the nav display over here. There we go. So you can basically drag and drop, um, which is all really cool. You can even change the different layouts and whatnot. So again, I need to spend a little bit more time with this car. I only have it for uh, basically two days, but it's great. This new infotainment system is a great size. I think Porsche is definitely going in the right direction here. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see my tester just has a backup camera and front and rear parking sensors. The camera quality is very similar to what I've seen in the last Audis. If you guys want a top-down 360 view, um, you have to go for an option package that will include that for about $1,200. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, this shifter obviously controls the seven-speed PDK. Uh, it also has a manual mode here, and then you can also use the paddles on the wheel. Speaking of the steering wheel, this is not the uh, GT Sport steering wheel instead. This is just the multifunction heated wheel. The heated steering wheel button is back here. Once you push that button, it turns the heated wheel on, uh, and then you can also push it again to turn the wheel heated wheel off. The button itself, I found myself hitting it at times when I'm making U-turns, so it's something you have to get used to. This here controls the volume, and then over here on this wheel, it controls this little display here. So you can show your torque split, you can show the tire pressure monitoring, your trip information, navigation, the actual map display over there, um, et cetera. Now, this screen here is very similar to what I find in my uh, Cayman. Um, Porsche, keep in mind, has a newer screen in the 911 where it's an all LCD display. Now, this steering wheel is also power, tilt, and telescoping, which is nice. It's also linked to the memory settings over there, which is good. This interior in terms of the materials, this is an expensive car. This is just the base interior. You have this soft touch injection molded plastic. If you guys go for an upgraded leather, Porsche will stitch this with leather, stitch this with leather here. Without it, it's just soft touch plastic. You have some piano black accent trim. You have some aluminum trim. The door panels here are also soft touch injection molded plastic, but it's not fully leather stitched. It is padded and stitched right here, which is good. You can open up the rear lift gate from here and then the windows our one touch automatic up down for all four, which is kind of what you expect. You can also fold the mirrors over here, adjust your mirrors, your headlight control is over here. No fog lights on this car, as I said. Your cruise control switch is down here. Now over here on the center stack, Porsche is in love with buttons. So if you guys love buttons, you're gonna like this. Keep in mind something like the Panamera has replaced the buttons here with touch sensitive panels, which I actually think I prefer the buttons, but you can see uh, all your climate control settings are here. It's got dual zone, more buttons over there, or more buttons over there for the climate control. Your heated and cooled seats are over here. Porsche actually allows you to turn both on. I like how it's an actual button button. Uh, there is again, a sport mode here, stability control off. The off-road button here, it really only just adjusts the transmission and the throttle position and maybe the stability control. This one doesn't have the air suspension which is probably why it has all these empty buttons over here, which would throw in the air suspension, which would fill up if you had the air suspension. Electronic parking brake, you have an ashtray and a cigarette lighter there because this one has the smokers package. The cup holders here, they're nothing really super special. They're a little bit on the smaller side, but they do adjust a little bit. 
This is nice and padded here. It does allow you to slide it forward and back, and then there's decent storage in there, and then Porsche gives you two USB ports, an SD card reader, and a SIM card reader over there. Now, the seats are pretty comfortable and supportive. These are just the 14-way, again. Um, I like the the Porsche crest on the headrest over here. It really makes the seats look nice. They're really soft and supportive. They don't have the ability to adjust um, the bolsters, but you can extend this thigh extender. The glove compartment you can see is huge. It's damped, it's slimed with felt, so it offers good storage over there. And then the Premium Plus package includes this big panoramic sunroof, which is nice. And then you have a lot more controls over here, uh, which is good. There's like basically all LED lighting in here because it has the light design package. So overall, Porsche has done a phenomenal job with updating the interior. Love the fact that they've thrown in their new 11 inch infotainment system in here. In terms of driver assistance, uh, I wish that they made like adaptive cruise control a standard. That's still an a la carte option that my tester is annoyingly missing. Now, the small trunk of the Macan carries over when you look at the back seat. This is also small for the segment. Getting back here, you can see Porsche actually doesn't even quote the legroom back here. I looked and I looked on their media site, on the actual consumer site. They don't quote legroom numbers, but I will say that the Q5, the sister vehicle, has 37 inches of legroom. This, to me, feels like it's less. I'd say this is around 34 inches of legroom, if I was going to guess. Uh, there is a fairly large hump here that does intrude on the middle passenger. You have two map pockets. Thankfully, there are some good features. My tester has the optional heated rear seats. You have two USB ports. You have your own set of clem uh, temperature fan speed knobs, and you have uh, vents back here, which is definitely nice. The armrest also folds down to give you two cup holders. And above me, there's a nice big panoramic sunroof, which helps let in a lot of light. It looks especially good in this beige uh, or interior color that my tester has, which is optional, of course. So earlier this year, I actually did a review on a 2018 Macan Sport Edition, which at the time was the special trim level of the 2018 model before they refreshed it. So I was really happy when I picked up this 2019 model as my loaner because the Cayman is in for a recall where they replaced this like front luggage compartment latch, which could apparently lead to a fire, blah, 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 blah. That car is getting a recall done. So. Anyways, the 2019 Macan. Porsche actually said that they have made some adjustments to the suspension tuning, to the steering. Uh, they wanted to make the handling more neutral, uh, make it feel a little bit more secure, but also improve the ride quality uh, and improve basically everything. And first setting off, it's really difficult for me to tell the differences between this and the 18. The Macan itself is just a really excellent car to daily drive. The ride quality is really good. Uh, my tester has the 19 inch wheels, which you know, you'd think would uh, make the car feel a little bit more stiff, but it actually has a very soft ride. I would be curious to try this car out with the adaptive suspension. Sadly, Porsche doesn't actually send me press cars. So uh, let's try doing a quick little launch. Now this car doesn't have the Sport Chrono package. So um, basically the only thing I could do is just basically put my foot down hard on the brake and floor it. It doesn't actually have launch control. <laughs> now, this car should get to 60 in around 6.3 seconds, Porsche says. If you guys get the Sport Chrono package, uh, it'll improve that to 6.1 seconds. Now, that time is pretty comparable to something like a BMW X3, 30i, a Mercedes C300, an Audi uh, A or Q5, stuff like that. So the PDK in this car is really good. It's the seven-speed PDK. It's kind of similar to the you know transmission that they use in the Q5, but it's been slightly beefed up for quicker shift shifts in the Porsche. Come on, man. Yep. Now, in terms of handling, the Macan is definitely one of the best handling uh, SUVs you can buy. I mean, this is a car that shares a platform with the Q5, but in terms of the actual feel, it does feel different than a Q5. This car feels wider, it feels lower, it feels more substantial. It feels like it's more tuned to be a sports car. So Porsche's done a good job with the overall tuning. I mean, the one thing that's a kind of a downfall is, with this car is the engine. The engine itself actually makes pretty enticing noises from the outside. Uh, the exhaust surprisingly makes some nice burbles and crackles, and this one doesn't even have the sport exhaust, so I'd love to try that out with the sport exhaust. I'm pretty confident, though, that you may as well just spend the extra nine grand and go for the S model with its 100 extra horsepower on the six cylinder, because the fuel economy penalty is not much, which I'll talk about later on. But in terms of going down the road, the Macan is super easy to drive, so it's really easy to see why this is the best-selling car that Porsche makes. It's just a really 
you know, easy car to live with on a daily basis. It's comfortable to drive in, uh, and it's not, you know, gonna beat you up with a firm ride like some SUVs. And in terms of everyday driving, the PDK is really good. I mean, Porsche does an incredible dual clutch. It's one of the best ones in the business. This car's transmission will fool you into thinking you're driving just a regular automatic. Uh, and then when you actually wanna drive quickly, you can start using the paddles anytime you want. And you can see it does a really good job at rev matching. <laughs> Listen to that fart. I wasn't expecting the fart noise in something like this, which is the standard exhaust system. It's, it's a really nice surprise, honestly. It puts a smile on my face. This thing will even downshift into first gear when your speed uh, reaches the right speed. <laughs> that fart is seriously hilarious. For a base engine car, this uh, sounds a little bit nicer than the last Q5 that I drove with the standard two liter, uh, a little bit nicer than the last X3 that I drove, and definitely nicer than the last GLC 300 with its, you know, all of them have two liter turbocharged uh, four seat. of the comfort, these are the 14-way seats in my tester, and they're also really good. Now, I do miss the fact that I can't adjust the bolsters here on the side and on the seat bottom cushion, which would be nice. For an extra $380, you can actually option in the 18-way seats. I would probably do it. My tester also has the Porsche crest on the headrest on the on the front for like an extra uh, 300 bucks. Um, it's nice, I guess, to have that there, but it seems kind of stupid to have that. Um, mine also has the heated steering wheel. Surprisingly, it also has the steering wheel audio controls, which is good. Um, this car in general uh, isn't really the best in terms of value. That's not what Porsches are known for. But you know, as a base engine car, there are times where I do wish that this thing had a little bit more power. The engine itself, you know, it doesn't have the typical character of a Porsche. It doesn't howl the way the engine in a Porsche should, but the exhaust sounds nice when it shifts and it has plenty of power and plenty of torque for most people. If you've never driven a Porsche, like a sports car before, but you kind of get into this and this will put a smile on your face. It's way more entertaining to drive than something like a CRV or even like the Mazda CX-5 Signature. I mean, that car uh, would be an enticing value and it's like half the price of this Porsche. But I will say that there's something more substantial and solid feeling about this car. Now where the Macan kind of lacks is in the driver assistance department. My tester does have the lane departure alert and lane change assist, whatnot. So it makes like a little bit of a weird noise whenever you cross the lane markers without signaling. Uh, it does also have forward collision uh, braking and warning, but if you're looking for adaptive cruise control, that is sadly a $1,200 standalone option. <laughs> now this car does have a more rear biased all wheel drive system and I can feel it at times when I take a turn. Uh, it's basically trying to send more power to the rear of the vehicle as opposed to you know the front of the vehicle. So it's very good in making this thing more fun to drive. Remember, this is a Porsche. You expect it to be more fun to drive, and it definitely is there. But honestly, if you're going to be spending you know 63 on this one, I would probably just say spend a little bit more and get the uh, get the S model. I mean, this car does start at 49 grand. This one at 63 is a lightly optioned model. Uh, but overall, I think a lot of you are gonna be rather impressed with the driving dynamics. I like the changes that Porsche has made, and I am very much looking forward to the GTS trim, the turbo trim, because Porsche has some catching up to do. Uh, the previous Porsche Macan um, uh, turbo with a performance package had around 440 horsepower. It is down about 60 horses compared to the last X3M that I drove, the Stelvio QV, the GLC 63. Um, so, you know, Porsche, they have some work to do on the next generation turbo. It makes, this car makes me excited for the next generation turbo. Um, but until then, I think that this car will continue to be uh, the best selling car in Porsche's lineup. Now really, the only thing it needs help on is fuel economy. In the few, day, in the few hours that I've been driving this thing, uh, I've been averaging around uh, 18, 19 miles to the gallon, which isn't wonderful. Uh, I expected this thing to at least do over 20. Uh, I would probably say it's because of the fact that the engine likes to rev and I'm constantly going into it. I'd have to drive the car for a little bit longer to see if I can get better gas mileage out of it. And plus at that point, you may as well just spend the money and get the six cylinder, which isn't that much lower in terms of the fuel economy.
So although Porsche is more widely known for their iconic 911 sports car, the Macan is arguably their more important model due to sales figures here in America. Like I said, they sold around 23,500 of these in all of 2018. So for 2019, as you can see, Porsche has made pretty strategic changes to the Macan to help, help keep this thing fresh. While the exterior styling, I think it looks good from certain angles. I Sometimes I look at this car and I think that the 2018 model actually looked better. I just haven't really warmed up to these new taillights. The interior is well, was where Porsche really spent most of their time. Love that new 11 inch display. I'm really excited to try that out in the upcoming 2020 911. And just know that that new interior will start being spread toward the rest of the Porsche lineup, especially when you look at cars like the upcoming Porsche Taycan, which is their all electric vehicle. Now, speaking of which, what's going on with the Macan? There's actually a rumor that Porsche said for the next generation, they're going to make this car all electric. That's right, they're gonna get rid of all of the gas engine and just make this car completely electric, which honestly I think is a good move for them because SUVs, as you guys know, are the dominant sales or sellers here in America and electrification is going to be the future, self-driving is the future, and that's kind of where Porsche just needs to kind of inch a little bit closer, is more electrification, you know, keep your similar performance, which kind of sucks, we're losing the gas internal combustion engine and all the visceral noises, but that's kind of where the 911 and sports cars will come to play. Cars like this, I think, where Porsche moving it more toward electrification is probably the right step. But as this one sits, the Macan still represents a really excellent choice in the compact SUV segment. Just know that if you're looking for one that has a little bit more interior space, that has more trunk space, that has a little bit more in terms of value, some of the competitors from BMW, from Audi, uh, from Mercedes are a little bit better options. With all that said, I did give this car an RPM rating already in the comparison with this and the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. So be sure to click on the link in the description below for the full breakdown of the RPM rating. I actually gave this thing a 41 out of 70 points, but I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 refreshed Macan, base Macan. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.